All right, so it's just about 2 p.m. Um, so first, I just want to thank everybody for taking time out of their day to join us on our webinar. This is the first of the Athena or for the Barnard webinar series. So we're excited that Athena is kicking you off. Um, we have uh, a wonderful tech assistant who's here should we encounter any technical difficulties. Um, so please feel free to chime in onto the chat if you're having trouble hearing us or if the slide doesn't progress. Um, as smoothly as it should, uh, you know, just bearing in mind that we're using new technology. Um, so my name is Victoria Gordon, and I am the acting director of the Athena Center for Leadership Studies here at Barnard, and I'm joined by my colleague, Sarit Abramowitz. Uh, and we're here to give you a little bit of background on the Athena Center, you know, the who, what, and where, when, why, um, and then also really dig into the Athena Scholars Program, which is our largest student-facing program, um, and Sarit will get uh, into the details of that a little bit later. Um, in addition to staying tuned into this webinar, I would really encourage you to join us in person for our NSOP info session, which will take place uh, on August 29th at 3 p.m. Um, we'll be covering different material in that in-person session, so it will not be duplicative. And we'd really, you know, we'd love to see you um, and greet you when you arrive here on campus. Just trying, bear with me, I'm trying to advance the slide. There we go. Um, so as I mentioned, my name is Victoria, I'm the acting director, and I'm sitting here alongside Sarit, who is our administrative director of student programs. Uh, we are supported by a wonderful team, which includes Erica Guzman, who works closely with Sarit on the student-facing programs. Those of you that decide to become Athena scholars will get to know Sarit and Erica very well. Uh, Kristen Malloy is the operations manager of our film festival, and Alyssa Chernigova is our senior program assistant uh, who helps keep us all organized um, and keeps us, you know, running smoothly. So just a quick overview of the Athena Center for Leadership Studies. Um, so as you all know by now, Barnard um, is over 125 years old. It's a premier uh, women's institution, the only liberal arts women's college in New York City. And Athena was founded uh, about nine years ago by then Barnard President Deborah Spar. And we are dedicated to educating and equipping the next generation of women leaders. And I'd like to take a minute just to clarify what we mean when we talk about leadership, because here at Athena, we take a very broad and expansive view of what leadership means. Um, to us, being a leader is giving you the skills that you need to impact and create change, uh, to be agents of influence, no matter what field or discipline you decide to pursue upon graduation. So we believe there are leaders and we will introduce you to women leaders from all backgrounds in all fields. I mean, this includes incredible female founders who are entrepreneurs. There are women leaders in STEM. Um, we have incredible women leaders here at Barnard um, in the areas of arts and dance and music. Um, women who are leading movements and creating change in our society. Um, so our goal, one of our main goals at Athena is to really break down this idea of what leadership means um, and break down those preconceived notions of what leadership looks like and give you the tools that you need to be successful no matter what you decide to do in your professional career. So you can think of Athena uh, and really break us down into four core pillars and four areas of programming. One of our pillars is leadership development and this uh, uh, portion of our program really focuses on providing professional development and training to female employees uh, in the professional world. So we do workshops and trainings for companies and organizations that are looking to support their female employees and really create a culture uh, that fosters um, and helps advance women to leadership positions um, within their company or organization. Um, and uh, to date, we've trained more than 1,500 women through those leadership development trainings. The second portion of our program that I'll talk briefly about is the Athena Film Festival. So the Athena Film Festival is a kind of a feature program of Athena and I would say a hallmark event for Barnard College. It takes place over the course of four days every February 
and it is, uh, we screen a series of features, documentaries, and shorts. And all of the films feature strong female protagonists at the center of the story. So films can be made by men or women, but the goal is really to celebrate and elevate the stories of fierce and fearless women leaders. Um, we also have a series of educational programs that we run for women who are interested in becoming directors, who are interested in filmmaking. Um, and we welcome about 6,000 people to Barnard every year for the film festival. Um, we're heading into our ninth Film Festival, which will take place in 2019. Um, so all of you will be here on campus for that. Um, and it's just an incredible way uh, to connect with other Barnard women and to really showcase uh, the mission of what Athena and Barnard are all about, which is celebrating bold visions of leadership. The third area of the, our program that I'll touch briefly on is our entrepreneurship portfolio that we call Entrepreneurs at Athena. And the goal of this part of our portfolio is really to expose Barnard women to different ideas of what entrepreneurship can be, what it can mean, and how it can manifest. Um, so in all of our leadership programming, we talk a lot about entrepreneurial spirit um, because we believe that it is important for women to be creative, to be innovative, to have the tools that they need to be entrepreneurial, even if you decide you know you don't want to start your own business or um, you know really become a founder, that's okay. Um, being an entrepreneur and being entrepreneurial is highly transferable, um, and so we're really here to expose you to different ideas of entrepreneurship. Um, we do a series of site visits where we take you off campus to meet female founders, um, and we also run a high school program for uh, rising juniors and seniors in high school um, in conjunction with the pre-college program office here at Barnard. And the fourth pillar of our program is our student-facing programs, which is the part of this webinar that we're really gonna dig into. So I'll turn it over to Sri to talk a little bit more about that. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm really happy to share with you one of the biggest and most important pieces of our programming since we're here ultimately to serve you the students. Um, so our student programs entail the Athena Scholars Program, the Athena Digital Design Agency, and uh, a number of fellowship and internship opportunities that we offer to our students. Um, so here's uh, the vast array of ways that we connect with students. Um, as I mentioned, the Scholars Program, which is our largest program here at, Bar uh, here at the Athena Center. To date, we've graduated over 250 students and the program continues to grow. Um, right now, we have more than 300 students participating, uh, which makes our job more challenging, but it's <laughs> better for the program, so we're really happy. And just to put it in perspective, it's about 10% of the student body that um, participates in the scholar program. So I'll get into a little bit more detail about what that entails in a little bit. The Athena Digital Design Agency is another unique program to Barnard. It was actually initiated by a group of students who were bothered by the fact that coding literacy is so low among women um, and wanted to change that. And the Athena Center was happy to support that initiative. So they developed a set of coding classes for Barnard students on campus so that there's easy access and that Barnard students can learn how to code in a supportive environment. Um, what's great about being at Barnard is you have access to a ton of resources across the street at Columbia, but those environments are not always conducive to learning for, for women in certain cases, and, and coding was one of them. So we wanted to create an environment that people felt comfortable and were really able to stretch and learn um, these skills. The next part of it, to grow those skills further, um, is they developed a business. Um, which allows those that participate in the coding classes to design websites for individuals, small businesses, nonprofits, and actually earn some income while doing that. And the business is completely student run. It's a student CEO, CFO. The entire advisory board is running by students and supported by us um, to give them advice and guidance. Um, um, but it's a really special chance to gain coding literacy, something that is becoming more and more a, ba a bare minimum in the work world. Um, so I encourage you to put this on your to-do list before you graduate Barnard to make sure you take at least one of Ada's courses and even consider becoming part of the agency either as a developer or as a leader because like Victoria said, whether or not entrepreneurship is something you're considering, these skills will be transferable and, and great to set you apart as you're um, 
advocating for yourself when you graduate. The next we have our leadership labs. These are our tangible skills building workshops. They are no more than 90 minutes and they're designed to give you those really those soft skills that you can use in any area of study, any area of work, um, things like networking, telling your story, financial fluency, understanding money on the basic level and understanding things on a higher level like investing. Um, these are things again that are transferable in many different ways. They're open to all Barnard students. They're free to all Barnard students. We try to offer them at different times um, to accommodate different schedules. And all the instructors are experts and professionals that we hire that are really knowledgeable in these areas. Um, so again, another thing to put on that to-do list before you graduate, make sure to take at least a leadership lab, though I think once you take one, you will find that you will want to take more. Once you leave campus, these, these classes cost in the hundreds of dollars. Every summer, um, to get to number four, we offer a number of fellowship opportunities. And this is, again, on the practical experiential side to really give students an opportunity to take advantage of different work experiences that are unfortunately sometimes unpaid. So what Athena does is offers financial support to students, in some cases housing, and in some cases, well, most cases, weekly mentoring. Um, we bring in guest speakers to talk to students about their own experiences and also advise them. And there's a lot of peer-to-peer -peer support that's um, embedded into the program. So this is a great opportunity during the summer months um, to enhance all those, uh, or take advantage really of, of New York City or even where you come from, where your home base is, and take some work, get some work experience and get some support in that process. I'll let Victoria talk about the next two items. Sure, thank you. Um, so the next two categories, number five and six, really fall under the events portfolio of what we do at Athena. Um, so number five, our Power Talks. That's the Athena branded lecture series uh, where we bring prominent women from diverse industries and fields here to campus to share their stories with you. Um, usually we pull our Power Talk speakers from the network of Athena Distinguished Fellows. I would encourage you to jump on our website, um, athenacenter.barnard.edu, and uh, just take a look at who these women are. Um, they include women like Minerva Tantoko, who was the first ever CTO of the city of New York. She is a Shahid, who was the founding CEO of the Malala Fund. Women like Marie Wilson, for example, who is the founder of the White House Project. Um, you know, just prominent women who have spent their lives fighting for women's equality and empowering other women, and they come to campus to share their stories and, and to network with you. Um, so it's a great opportunity just to broaden your horizons a little bit, maybe make some connections to senior women leaders in different fields, um, and bring your, bring your friends and family. The Power Talks are open to the public. It's a great event um, where we bring alums back to campus, um, and they're just, you know, good community events. Um, and as I mentioned, the film festival is the final way um, we really touch students. There are a lot of opportunities for students to get involved in the film festival. Um, the two kind of longest engagements, most substantive, are the two internships we offer to Barnard women who serve on the programming team. So every year we have two interns uh, who work very closely with Melissa Silverstein, who is the founder of the Athena Film Festival. Um, I would encourage you to check out her organization, which is called Women in Hollywood. Um, she's a badass, basically. Um, and she has been fighting for gender equity in Hollywood for the past 10 years. Um, and she really helps curate the slate of films that happen or that play at the festival alongside our part-time programmer, Opal Bennett. And so these two interns work really closely with Melissa and Opal and select and identify the films. Um, and on top of the internships, um, there are a number, I mean, literally hundreds of opportunities to volunteer over the course of the four days. Um, so every year as the festival continues to grow, we continue to recruit more and more volunteers to help with things like check-in, um, to help with the VIPs, uh, to help direct alums to certain events. Um, I mean, it really does take a village to pull this off. And of the 300 plus volunteers that we had sign up for shifts last year, I would say about 75% of them were Barnard students. Um, and so in exchange for your volunteering service, we give you a pass so that you can take advantage and you know see all of the films 
um, and attend the educational programs for free. Um, so it's an incredible event. It's hard to ignore. It will take over your campus for those four days. Um, so all the more reason to dive in and get involved. And sometimes professors will sign a film from the festival as part of the class, um, or you can go as a group. Sometimes RAs will take their floor to see a film together. It's a really nice um, community building experience. We, we have a luncheon where we invite students from all over the country mm -hmm. to come um, network with our students and go see a film afterwards. We occasionally do a brunch where we bring students to meet with filmmakers. So there's a lot of ways really that students can connect with the festival and be part of this mission to expand those and break those stereotypes that are still in Hollywood. I also wanted to mention we have internship opportunities at the Athena Center. So if you wanted to get some work experience and learn the behind the scenes each semester, there's an opportunity for an intern to come and work with us and also gain those work experiences and see how we do the work that we do. Yeah, we always say that here at Athena, we're powered by interns because as you know, you may remember from that second slide, we're a pretty small team. Um, and so we really leverage the you know, brilliance of the Barnard women to help us support, uh, to support us in our everyday kind of standard operations. So we're gonna dig into the Athena Scholars Program specifically. So Sarit, over to you. Yeah, so yeah, a lot of my time is spent on this program as it's, um, probably the most involved of the programs that we do because it does have a curriculum. Um, we call it, we, we kind of liken it to a minor in the sense that there's a list of prescribed requirements that participants have to follow. What makes it different is that some of the participants, uh, some of the components are academic and some of them are experiential. So anyone who wants to be a scholar will take five courses. Three of them are electives. So these are our courses that are cross-listed in all different departments across, uh, across campus. And they will have to do with gender issues, power dynamics, societal structures and issues, movements, um, advocacy in history. And then, and of course, presentation skills, because we see that as a really important skill in terms of leadership development. So you might see acting classes on the list of approved of ele electives. Uh, even dance classes are sometimes on there. And of course, English classes like rhetoric um, will be on there. Then there's the women in leadership class, which is number four, and that's thought, taught by the Athena Center by our instructors. And this is what really grounds the program. It's a chance to get the scholarship, the theory, and the historical context that informs conversations and understanding of women in leadership. Where does this concept live? What are the current issues surrounding this idea? Um, and how do we take it to the next level? The experiential component of the program allows students to get those tangible experience, to get the hands-on practical skills that you don't always get when you're in a liberal arts education, um, and also learn something that is really important to us is how to turn ideas into action. So one piece is the practicum, where we ask students to find an internship in any area that they think will help them in their development um, but what's different about this is opposed to just doing an internship, you're also part of an online discussion group. So you're really processing the experience and absorbing it and doing it with intentionality. You're thinking about how your leadership is developing throughout the process and you're doing this alongside your peers. Um, so you do it with groups of other scholars so you can really go through the process together and share the experience and learn from one another. Um, we also challenge you to network and leverage that experience. So we'll ask you to have coffee with someone um, at, your, at your workspace and, and tell us about it. We'll ask you to meet with your fellow practicum participants and share insights and share experiences, to share challenges and successes and strategies um, for those challenges. So I think that's what really makes it unique is that it includes the processing and it includes the networking and really being conscientious about this experience and how it's impacting your growth. We talked about the leadership labs earlier. We asked that scholars take six labs throughout their time. Um, our thinking is that you do two per year. However, however, whatever works for your schedule or your needs is fine. Um, we find that a lot of students will do more than six because they find them useful um, in so many ways. Um, so the final requirement, which is the capstone of the program and brings it all together, is the senior seminar. So obviously you take that in your last year. And during that course, you will be completing what we call social action.
project, which is based on that idea I mentioned earlier of taking something you're passionate about and actually implementing it and making it happen. And our goal here is to show you that you are already agents of change and that you can make an impact and make things happen right now. It's not something that has to wait. Um, so when we provide you with the resources and support, um, and you do it again alongside your peers as part of a community. And so at, throughout the course of the semester, you're partnering with an organization outside of campus and designing and building something that either promotes social service, social advocacy, or social entrepreneurship. So some examples, um, and they're so wide ranging because really it's up to the student to decide what they wanna focus on. But we had a student last semester who designed her own platform called Meet Her, which was a way to kind of foster online networking in a less daunting environment and help make those connections that really turn into job opportunities. Um, another one was Basic Bits, where a student kind of developed um, an online training program that helped break down some of the complex concepts of computer science and coding. Because a lot of times in the world of um, educational for coding and computer science, there's not a lot of support, which is sometimes what detracts people. Another example is FemSource, um, and the students were striving to eliminate the gender bias that happens when journalists cite experts in their in their news articles, it's amazing and mind blowing how few women are cited, despite the fact that in academia and in the world, women are very prevalent as experts. So they were sought to change that by developing a really easy accessible site that you can find a huge plethora of female sources. Um, and the list goes on and on. We have a website um, that's open to everyone. I highly encourage you to develop uh, sorry, visit it and see the social action projects going back to the beginning because they're truly inspiring. And they're people like yourselves that did them during college. Um, so it really shows you what you can be pushed to do and what you can um, are capable of accomplishing throughout the program. So just to kind of recap um, what the benefits are of being, part, being a scholar, being an Athena scholar, it's an opportunity to develop your leadership identity, to think about how you, what makes you unique and what is your voice as a leader. It gives you exposure to really cutting edge research and scholarship um, on women in leadership, the, the, the sources that are used, the, the guest speakers that come into the classes, they're really all at the top of their field and making a change in this area of study. We talked about this a lot, but this is really also an opportunity to get that hands-on practical skills building experience through social action project, the leadership labs, the practicum. Um, and the social action project is something that you will have in your portfolio once you leave Barnard that really sets you apart. A lot of your peers will have the great grades, will have the extracurriculars, but few of them will have their own initiative that they designed and implemented and really generated impact. So I think that's really significant not to mention the skills that you've developed along the way by going through that process. Anyone who's a scholar um, gets a designation on their transcript as an Athena Leadership Scholar. So that's a really great selling point when you're presenting to a grad school or to a future employer to have that. Another thing that we really find important is that we're a community. We want people that are participating in the scholars program to really feel that they're a part of a group of other Barnard change makers, other women leaders, other women that identify and really want to make a change and a difference. Um, and what's extra special is that this is a multidisciplinary community. You'll find yourself um, joining a lot of different groups of like interests. This really gives you a chance to get new perspectives from people from the STEM fields, from the arts, from econ, from people who are doing different things, but those vast perspectives really inform your work. Um, and it's rare that you really get to have a community with people who have different perspectives. I think Victoria talked about this a lot, but we have an incredible network um, that our scholars really get to access through the classes, through the power talks, through our, our amazing alumni that still get together and keep in touch and, and visit us and participate. We bring guest speakers to classes. Um, I mentioned our leadership lab instructors, um, our council of advisors and supporters. So it's really a wide network that's not always visible, but it's pretty vast. Um, and the scholars have special access. And the more we get to know you, the more we can make those connections more easily. So um, it gives you that access. And then of course, 
Um, it's not common to see a center like this on a liberal arts campus. So we really pride ourselves that that's something that's special and unique to Barnard and um, really enhances that liberal arts education, the, the exceptional education that you will get here. And of course, resources, which includes funding for conferences, funding for internships and other professional endeavors. Um, that you may want. So we actually have a lot of access and opportunity. I send weekly newsletters to all the scholars with very, very wide ranging opportunities that will support them in all different ways. And finally, how to become a scholar. Um, one thing that's really important about this program is it is self-selected. We, there's no application process. We do not make the selection of who can join. It is really up to you to decide. It is something that you need to think about if you want to prioritize if leadership development, if identifying your leadership voice, being part of this community is important to you. It is up to you to make that commitment um, and decide. It's a very worthwhile commitment, but we want students really to think about for themselves if they want to pursue this. And we also don't want to decide what makes a leader. It's really important to us that leadership can look in so many different ways to so many different people. Everybody has their own vision of what a leader can look like and we want students to identify that for themselves. We will help you on that journey, but we want you to really make that determination. Um, the only thing we do say is to, um, the entry point is usually in your second or third semester at Barnard. Um, we think it's really important the first semester that you settle in, get the lay of the land, get used to college, get used to New York City and Barnard, and then come to us in your second semester or third semester and really make a commitment, an informed commitment based on uh, your adjustment and what you have developed in terms of your interests. Um, if you're a transfer student, just come talk to me if you don't fit into one of those two semesters. If you're coming in maybe your third semester, just come talk to me. I'm happy to meet with you and we can dis discuss um, whether you have enough credits from your previous institution or if it's really feasible. But I'm open to talking to anyone about the possibility of joining. Um, we do require that you attend one information session. We offer three of them each semester um, and they're all different times and dates. So it shouldn't be a problem to attend at least one of them. And this gives you a chance to hear from students who are currently in the program, hear directly from them about what this experience is about, what they're, and what they're getting out of it, and what the expectations are. Once you've attended one of the information sessions, you will be asked to complete a contract by a certain deadline. And really the purpose of this is just to affirm your commitment to, to the program. It lists the expectations that you can have of us and the expectations that we have of you. We hold an orientation for all new students, um, which is a chance not only to learn about the program, but more importantly, to meet your peers, to meet the rest of the scholars, and to really become uh, immersed in the community. And then we also have a majors mixer, mixer, which we're reintroducing this year. And this is a chance to meet with students in the program and have them help guide you through the process of major selection or navigating how to balance a major with the scholars program and any other commitments or interests that you have. So we've listed the information sessions here on the slide, but this information is also available on our website. So just mark your calendar, especially for the spring, or if you wanna get a taste of it in the fall and then come back in the spring to formally apply, that's great. Um, so we're very excited. Uh, in a couple weeks, we're moving into our new space at the brand new Milstein Center. You're going to be the first class to start off with this new state-of-the-art building, and we'll be there on the fourth floor. Please come visit us. Um, we're happy to have students come by at any time. We try to make it an open and warm environment, and we're happy to talk to students. Um, and if you have questions, you know, please come connect with us. You're free to feel free to visit us on our website. There's a lot of information on there. Um, we have an info session at NSAP, as Victoria mentioned earlier. So you can come meet us in person and hear a little bit more about the program. You're always welcome to email us, even starting now um, or at any point during the years, whether you're a scholar in a program or not, we're happy to chat with you. And please feel free to visit us on Facebook. Um, so with that, we're happy to open up to any questions. If anything wasn't clear, if you want more elaboration, we have some time and we're 
we're happy to hear from you. We'll be using the chat functionality to field your questions. So um, just feel free to start typing away. We'll stay um, on, the, on the line, keep the webinar open for the next 10, 15 minutes um, and are here to answer questions as needed. So thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you for sitting through. We'll see you in August. <laughs>
Ooh, Heidi, that's a great question. <laughs> and the answer is yes. The internship um, that is part of the scholars program, uh, the practicum that Sarit was talking about, can be in any field. And we've had a lot of kind of diversity yeah. amongst the student body in terms of what their internships um, look like and where they are. We've had interns work um, as research assistants for professors here at Barnard. We've had interns at huge uh, multinational NGOs, uh, interns who are working for political strategy consulting firms and for corporations and educational organizations and really kind of across the board. Um, and we encourage that um, yeah. because, yeah, you know, that's part of what we do here is to give you um, the leverage and the resources you need to pursue your passion. And specifically the practicum is there to give you prompted reflection opportunities to you know, go into that internship and then really think about what it means to be a woman at work during that experience and give you that opportunity to reflect on that, so. Yeah, and leadership applies to all fields. Absolutely. I think there's a lot of misconceptions and I've heard it directly to myself like, oh, I'm in the arts, there's no leadership in the arts. Of course there's leadership in the arts or I'm a musician. Absolutely. Um, so as long as you're getting work experience, it's helpful if your practicum is in an environment, in a some kind of professional environment where you have someone you're working who's guiding you in terms of your work, like a supervisor. Um, it's nice if you have peers, um, just because it helps in terms of navigating the support you get in navigating that process. But we're pretty open um, to what those internship opportunities are. What it is not is a job that you're doing solely for the purposes of getting some extra money, exactly. like babysitting, or if you're working as a cashier. If that is something that is definitely in line with your professional goals, we can talk. But it's meant to be something that is directly related to getting work experience, leadership experience, and professional experience. So we actually do not provide the internships. Um, the students get the internships themselves um, so the scholars program doesn't have kind of a matching or fulfilling program. It's up to the students to actually find their own internships. That said, we do, we are happy to offer support. Although we find that students at Barnard have a great, um, network and the beyond Barnard, which encompasses our career services is a really great resource. And we always have opportunities. I send opportunities all the time to the scholars. Um, so it's up to the student to find their own internship. Um, so it's not exactly a placement. The internships at the office um, are not necessarily only for scholars. So if you wanted to intern at the Athena Center, um, usually we have at least one of them as a scholar, if not more, um, but we've had um, non-scholars as interns almost every semester. Yep, absolutely. Um, so you can definitely apply to be an intern um, if you're not an Athena scholar. All right, there's still a few of you on the line, so we'll hang out for another couple of minutes and uh, field a few more questions. Um, don't be shy. Feel free to, to chime in if you've got anything we can clarify, any questions at all. Now's your time. <laughs> and of course, if you think of something else, if something pops into your head, feel free to reach out. Interesting question, Maya. Yeah. Um, and Sarit, you know, chime in. I would, I would say um, it's common. I, I'm not sure I would use the, the word most in terms of how many students do a major, a minor, and the scholars program, but I would say it's common. It is pretty common. Yeah, we'd have to look at the statistics, mm -hmm. uh, but it is, it is definitely common for students to do a major and, and definitely a minor. Um, we have a few double majors in the group as well. Um, but after a while, beyond that, it gets a little challenging. Right. Although it does, it does occur. And again, we see a lot more of those major minor combinations in the humanities. So combining things like political science and economics or English and social. Um, yeah.
Mm. That's a really good question about yep. the social action project and senior project. Um, you know, the senior projects vary. Um, I think some are longer than others. Some are semester long, some are um, full year. The social action project is only one semester and it's offered both semesters of your senior year. So you can take it either the fall or the spring. So students will plan intentionally around that um, to make sure that their schedule is as balanced as, as possible. And of course, it depends on you know, your major, your thesis, um, what the workload is like. But that's definitely something that you want to think about and consider as you approach your senior year. One thing that's helpful and what we encourage and we give students benchmarks is to get all your other requirements out of the way so that when you're a senior, you're really focusing on your social action project, your senior project, and of course, all the other things that you want to keep in mind as you're moving on to the next stage post-college. Um, but yeah, students, students will do both. Um, and we do have people, students who overlap both, but if you can separate it out, that's why we offer it each semester. So you have that a little bit of a choice in terms of when you take it. And actually this semester, because we have um, a big group of students, we're actually offering two sections this fall, or we're hoping to offer two sections this fall. So we're trying to experiment with that as well. Hopefully we'll see how that works out. Um, but we do our best to make things um, feasible for our students. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I would, it's a lot. Um, and we know that it's a lot. And part of what it means to be a leader is learning how to manage your time and how to make those tough choices and to prioritize what it is you're interested in pursuing professionally. So, um, and you know, I don't want to water it down. It is a lot. We know that it's a lot. Um, there will be a lot asked of you when you arrive here on campus. Barnard is a challenging place and um, already. And then the Athena Scholars Program is that extra challenge you decide, may decide to take on on top of your minor and major and all of the other amazing opportunities you're going to have here on campus. Um, but it, to Sarit's point, it's absolutely doable. And you know, we, every year we graduate 35 to 40 scholars who have done it successfully. Um, and that number, you know, continues to grow. And they always amaze us with what they achieve. Yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll tell us in the feedback that it was probably one of the hardest things that they've had to do here on campus, but also one of the things that they found um, to be most rewarding. So it's a give and take. All right, with that, I think we'll sign off. Um, as Sarit mentioned, if you have any other questions or anything else that pops into your head, um, feel free to shoot us an email. And uh, we hope you will come and introduce yourselves to us um, during our info session in August. And enjoy the rest of your summer. And we'll see you in August. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much.